what's up everybody it's Cami J official and welcome to my video it's Cami J official so let's start the show to all my returning subscribers hey and to anybody that is new welcome thank you so much for joining me but let's go ahead and get right into the video so what we're going to discuss today is traction alopecia and this is actually something that I've seen come up a lot recently in not only news articles but in magazines and a lot of YouTube videos as well in the recent weeks I've actually stumbled upon a couple of YouTube videos of young women actually having to go get hair transplant surgery because they pretty much have destroyed their edges and have very advanced traction alopecia. So what is traction alopecia? So traction alopecia is a form of alopecia or gradual hair loss caused primarily by the pulling force being applied to the hair. This commonly results from the sufferer frequently wearing their hair in a particularly tight ponytail, pigtails, or braids. In addition to hair loss, traction alopecia can also cause the following symptoms. Redness of the scalp, bumps, soreness or stinging of your scalp, itching, scaling, folliculitis, which is inflammation of the hair follicles, and pus-filled blisters on your scalp. So the question I wanted to ask in this video in particular is, why do you feel as though we are allowing this type of hair loss to occur to us? Like, why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we allowing others to do this? Why do we go home with hairstyles that we know are too tight but endure the pain of those hairstyles and put our hair in jeopardy and put our hair in danger? And I wanted to ask those questions and kind of start the discussion within the comment section to kind of understand and see, you know, what you all think about traction alopecia and have you ever personally experienced it yourself? When you look at the medical terms associated with traction alopecia, one of the main things that stuck out to me is that it is always described as being self-inflicted. What is it? about tight hairstyles that attracts us so much to them that we are willing to put our hair on the line. I've heard some people say that they are afraid to speak up once they get in the hairstylist chair and that's kind of what led them to having an extremely tight hairstyle that they paid a lot of money for and they don't want to take out because they felt as though, listen, I sat here for eight to 10 hours or however long it took to put the braids in, to put the weave in, to do the faux locks, to do the crochets or whatever. And I find that very interesting. I find it interesting that we are willing to suffer for the sake of a hairstyle. We are willing to go to such lengths to maintain a hairstyle that we would put the very hair that we're trying to grow in jeopardy. So traction alopecia is not something that is uncommon. Actually, I've read in a couple of news articles that traction alopecia, specifically in the black community, is becoming something that is more and more prevalent, meaning that more and more black women in particular are showing up to dermatologists requesting to get hair transplant, asking what they can do to regrow their hair and their hairline specifically. Traction alopecia does not only affect somebody's hairline, that might be the most visible part, kind of the part that's most apparent when somebody is suffering from traction alopecia is their hairline beginning to recede. However, traction alopecia can affect different parts of your hair. Some people get traction alopecia right in um, the middle of their hair and that's typically people who wear a lot of sew-in weaves, especially when they get the weaves done in that beehive type of shape. Traction alopecia can affect any part of your hair. There have been uh, several people who get traction alopecia that actually starts in the back of the hairline because when you get your hair braided down or if you get um, your hair done in like micros or anything that puts any type of tight pressure on your hair, you know like you move your neck. You, you look left, you look right, you look up, you look down and those movements coupled with the tight braids in the back of your hair can cause traction alopecia. Um, another thing that I read in a news article concerning traction alopecia is they're beginning to see more and more young children come in and suffer from traction alopecia. Dermatologists are speaking up saying, you know, I'm seeing a lot of seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds suffer from traction alopecia because their parents are doing these hairstyles in the children so tight. Another problem that has led to the prevalence of traction alopecia is the belief that a hairstyle is not done right unless it is tight and 
I've literally heard people say that if the braids aren't tight, they aren't right because we believe that the braids are done extremely tight, then they will last and we will pretty much get our money's worth. And if you go on YouTube, you can even look up people's stories, unfortunately, of them having braid horror stories. People getting their hair braided so tight that their scalp has actually split, actually having to go to the hospital because they went to sleep and they woke up and their scalp was full of so much pus, they weren't able to do anything. The pus had actually dried down and they had to go ahead and go to the emergency room for that. The stories of women who have had to go to bed taking Motrin, Advil, Tylenol, or some type of pain reliever in order for them to make it through the night with their braids. I would submit to you that if you have to take medication in order to endure a hairstyle, that it may be time to actually rethink these hairstyles or actually rethink the way that we get these hairstyles done. I think that it's ridiculous for somebody to have to take pain medication in order to endure a hairstyle. I think culturally, a lot of us have been taught, again, if the braids are not tight, they're not done correctly, you know, that braids are supposed to hurt. A lot of people are told, listen, your braids are supposed to hurt, but you know, after a couple of days, the hair will loosen up and you'll be fine and you'll be good to go. And I believe these types of ideas or what ultimately lead to people suffering from traction alopecia. Another thing I realized when looking up and reading about traction alopecia is that by the time the person actually notices or realizes that they're that they have traction alopecia, oftentimes it's it's too late for them. Like they're at the point where they cannot salvage their hair because they pulled so much of their hair follicles out from the root. So now they have to go and resort to again getting hair transplant surgery. So with hair transplant surgery, what essentially happens is a doctor will go ahead and take a section of scalp from the back of your hair. They are gonna go ahead and re individually remove the hair follicles. Then they're going to transplant them wherever you have lost the hair. Now, please understand, I am in no way, shape or form saying that braids are wrong or that getting crochets are wrong or that getting weave is wrong or that getting any type of those hairstyles are wrong. But I do believe that there is a right way to go about it and a right way to do it so that way we do not have to suffer voluntary hair loss. Once you get your hair done and once you get your braids done, you need to really take the time and evaluate and make sure that you are not going to suffer any hair loss from the style. The best way to do that is ask yourself, do I feel a lot of tension in my head? Does my head feel sore? Do I have a headache? Do I feel like I need to take any type of pain medication? If you feel like any of that is true to you, then nine out of 10 times, your hair is too tight. If you look at your hairline and you begin to see a lot of little bumps surrounding where any of the tension is, then that is a sign that your hair is too tight. If you see any type of redness, if you see any type of irritation, if you see any type of swelling in your scalp or your hairline, then that means that your hair is too tight. These styles are very attractive because we think, okay, this is going to be a quick fix. I've been there before and let me tell you, I've been, I've been to the point where I'm like, I don't want to do with my hair. I don't want to do anything with it. I want to give myself a break. So when you want to give yourself a break, one of the first things you do is say, okay, I want to get braids or I want to get faux locks. I want to get crochets because those are easy go-to styles. It means that, you know, we get to take a break. We don't really have to necessarily worry about our hair. So traction alopecia, it's a very serious thing. And I'm, I'm honestly sad to see so many women and young women in particular begin to lose their hair because of allowing somebody to do their hair too tight or simply not understanding what is going on. And I feel like a lot of things surrounding traction alopecia just go along with the lack of understanding as to hair, hair care, scalp care, and the potential for scalp damage to happen. When was the last time you checked your edges? When was the last time you kind of took the time to look in the mirror and look at your hairline and see, you know, is your hairline just as strong as it was before? Maybe your hairline is becoming weak. Again, sometimes we don't notice things until it is too late and we get to the point where we need medical intervention. Traction alopecia is completely and totally preventable. It is preventable and I feel as though, again, going along with self-care, making sure that when you are getting your hairstyle that it is not doing damage to you is a part of self-care. I also wanna encourage us to never be afraid to speak up to the stylist. Never be afraid to speak up to the person that is doing your hair. If you feel as though a style is too tight or if your hair is too tight, 
stop and pause right there because the longer you let it go on, the longer you wear those braids, the longer you continue to wear your hair too tight, the more and more you're going to lose your edges. But yeah guys, thank you so much for joining me in this discussion about traction alopecia. If you like what you heard here today, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and then hit the notification bell so that way you can see even more videos from me. Have a great day, bye!